My name is Tom Lonsborough, I'm the Ableton Certified Trainer here at the school and in this video very excited to just take you through a couple of the new workflow enhancements in the forthcoming version of Ableton Live 10. Uh, so where do we start? There's lots of tiny little improvements. Um, as always with Ableton it's not sort of like huge overblown features which some people might use and some people might not it's like really subtle workflow tweaks which are just so useful um, and just refine what's already there so the first thing is in the browser we've got this new section called collections um, now if i just hover here we can edit you see you have up to one two three four five six seven different collections we'll come back to edit mode in a moment what these allow you to do is using the number keys on your computer's keypad if you come across anything that you really like the sound of let's say for argument's sake that sound from the Ableton Live library you see all the sounds that I like I'm coloring in green so I just have to press button one two three four and there you go you see you get a little green dot next to it so rather than having to dive into the folders every time I want to find that particular sound I can just go there and there it is. Now users of UAD plugins on live previously will know that sometimes it can be a bit of a pain in the neck to go into your UAD plugins and have to look at everything which you might not have already purchased to search through and find the ones that you actually do own. So that's been a major um, workflow tweak for me just being able to narrow down quickly see what I've got available for my UAD plugins also to quickly see some of my most used third-party plugins um, I'm a big fan of the, the Korg Legacy collection, Isotope Ozone etc some of the stuff from the Native Instruments library so I can quickly jump to that section in collections rather than sifting through my plugins folder it's ideal for little samples as well, so as you're going through, say, Ableton Live packs, if you just come across a sample that you like, for argument's sake, something like that, I'm just going to give that 7 colour, um, and I can start to build up a repository of claps that I like the sound of, for argument's sake. I just go to edit now, and you can see... Should just be able to command R that and rename that. So when I'm starting a track out, that's just going to save me, um, you know, valuable minutes rather than sifting through gigabytes and gigabytes of samples every time I want to start something new. Uh, I know that I've got a repository of samples there that I've already listened to, and I know that I'm going to use in a future, uh, a future project. Now you'll notice while we're in edit mode, um, you can actually deselect some of these to make them invisible. Um, so for example, I don't often use pre-made clips from live packs, so I can deselect that, click on done. You see that temporarily disappears from the categories just to keep things nice and neat and tidy. So that's a really subtle but powerful browser enhancement that I'm finding myself using quite a lot. Just while we're on the subject of the browser, we can now manage packs from inside the browser. This means that we don't have to launch a web browser externally, log into our Ableton account. We can do it all via the browser. It shows you the available packs that you haven't yet downloaded. Obviously, this will depend on your particular version of Live. And we can just click and download those at any point, obviously providing we've got an internet connection. I should also point out um, that push to will see the collections section of the browser. So this was a, a tiny bugbear of mine previously. Um, obviously, if you go to drums, uh, you're looking at every particular uh, pre-made drum kit that you've got from any Ableton Live pack, and it's in alphabetical order um, rather than it being, um, say, in genre order or something like that. Now, we could dive into the packs uh, and then browse for a, a drum kit in that way. But just being able to, you know, create these uh, sound collections or drum co uh, collections, either pre-made kits or samples, it just makes browsing for stuff so much quicker and easier using Push too. 